John, who's Slim Potato Head? Never heard of the guy. Well, that just shows I got a little bit more work to do. But those that have seen my videos, I needed to show a little appreciation. Well, today's my big day. It's the Meet Me in St. Louis event. I'd uh, sent out a small little video about two weeks ago that if any of my viewers wanted to meet me in St. Louis, give me an email and uh, I'll see if I can make it happen. You might have missed it, but here's what I sent out. So all those that wanted a chance to meet Slim Potato Head, why not meet me in St. Louis? Find a little spot by the Mississippi, you can have a beer with me. And we'll have fun. Cheers. See you there. And I was hoping, you know, maybe a few, half a dozen or something might want to show up. But in reality, it was a lot of people. More people than I could possibly accommodate. So there's a little bit of a compromise, but I think I've got it all arranged. I've got a covered area in a park. Seeing that it's probably gonna rain today, but that should still be okay. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. I don't really do groups very well. I do meet a lot of people on the road and I, I meet a lot of people that have seen my videos, but it's usually only like couples or one or two people, so I'm okay with that. Groups is a challenge, but wish me luck. I hope it works out. Okay, microphone test. One, I did no preparations two, for this, three, just a sound check before way, anybody arrived. Okay. Not knowing that the rains were gonna destroy the sound anyway. But once they were all there, I sat on a table and answered any questions. What's your journey right now, currently? What's that? What's your journey right now? What, what is your intention? Well, I started off from this, this one, I started off in Alberta in January, uh, went through Montana. Idaho, Utah, finally got somewhere warm where I made it to uh, Nevada, uh, California, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, and now I'm in, in Illinois. So I started around that way, and around that way, and I'm right here. And the plan was to just stay where it was warm enough, but not super hot, not super cold. I'm, I'm, I'm not a guy that has to, it has to be room temperature all the time or I'm not going there. I, I tend to... You've seen that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tend to find a few extremes, but uh, in reality, I don't want to be super uncomfortable. I don't like using the furnace. Uh, I typically bring a couple of sleeping bags, and if there's no reason to heat the whole trailer, I don't. You know, I can usually just get underneath the uh, you know, sleeping bag and get my reading light and read a book or get on my computer or whatever. So I'm just not uh, It has to be room temperature 24 hours a day trying to die. I'm, when we watch, I sit there and I go, <laughs> the whole 20 minutes. Yeah. But you'd be surprised how many women travel and do the same thing. Well, that, I don't mind cold, but 20 yeah. below? <laughs> well, 20 below, yeah. That's, that's a little bit more of a challenge. And that's, that's why I've got the wood stove. Right. So what is everybody, why is everybody here? Campers, are you nature lovers? Uh, <laughs> What? See all of the above. Yeah. 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 So my wife and I are talking about when I retire doing what, you, what you're doing. Okay. Just kind of cruising around out west. Finding, yeah. I mean, we do a lot of national parks now, but I've always wanted to do like BLM lands. Yeah. You know, kind of do the free camping. So yeah. we're, we're planning all that out. And uh, I keep dragging her in to watch your videos. Oh, great. Why do you keep watching? Because he's going where I want to go. Okay. Yeah. Well, one thing I, I want to make sure everybody understands is I'm not a nomad. Some people think I am a nomad, and I've never used the word, um, I'm a traveler. And what that means is 
I don't have to obey all these rules to be a nomad. It's, well, what area do I want to be in to be with nature, to, to you know, listen to music, you know, if it's, if it's an event like that, uh, and, and explore the country. Uh, obviously, because it's a little colder in Canada, the few months of the year I prefer the U.S., but reality, I mean, that's, that's one of the beauty, of, the beautiful thing about the U.S. is you can go around the whole country the whole year and survive that way. There's not many places where you can do that. You certainly couldn't do it very well in Canada. That was one of my questions, too, is uh, <clears throat> are you going to stay here in the summer and the springs and blistering heat? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, unless I can find, I'll find a way to make a, like an air conditioner out of a pop can or something <laughs> like that, and yeah. chances are, you know, I, I've, I've had it, I think, 105, and that was good enough for me. But, I mean, yeah, Death Valley and in July or something. I don't think I'm going to, my cameras would be melting. There's no point in that. Here it's humid. Yeah. yeah. One well, thing I hear yeah. is it's 106 yeah. and it's humid. Yeah. Yeah. And that just sort of hits you. I'm like, yeah. you can't get away from it. Nice and dry and going through Texas and get out for gas and woo! <laughs> it just sort of hits you. There's a lot of questions about my trailer. An A frame is not ideal for winter. You know, I never said it was. I just sort of, well, can I make it work? And, and it, most of it's because of just so much metal. The aluminum frame, it attracts condensation and it, and it draws in the cold and it draws out your heat. So, you know, other vehicles or, or other trailers would probably work better, but I wouldn't be able to haul them around. I wouldn't be able to go up to places up in the mountains and all that. Uh, or I need a bigger tow vehicle, so it's like more money, more space. And it's like, ah, there is there is no perfect vehicle, really. Some people like vans. Some people like, uh, you know, big motorhomes. Whatever they like, that's fine as long as they're quiet. <laughs> I'm just, you know, like I'm not anti-generator, but I know that keeps coming up every once in a while. But it's like I don't go to support where somebody's sleeping and yeah. get my ghetto blaster and play rap music all day. So when I'm in somewhere natural and I can hear the birds singing yeah. and I can hear the wind, I don't want to hear <laughs> which is to me is like a jackhammer sometimes. It's just a little farther away because if it's not muffled, um, yeah, it just hits you right right in the ears all the time. So I try to encourage Others, I mean, people do need generators, and that's that's a given. Not everybody has the luxury of, you know, doing it the way I do it. But I, I do encourage people just to be considerate of others. And you know, if that's any message, then hopefully it's that one. I did like your uh, uh, the reviews on the episode where you showed the uh, the flexible solar panels. Oh, okay. Yeah, my, my, my solar, it's been a work in progress for like three, three years at least. When I started off, I didn't know anything about them. And I pretty well still don't know. <laughs> but I've got a lot of more experience about it at least. Uh, certainly there, there's a big difference between the glass and the flexible as far as them lasting over time. But I was in a bit of a spot. I couldn't put glass on my roof. I mean, the A-frame is, is perfect for solar panels. It's it's slope right where the sun usually yeah, sure. is. It's ideal. And when it's down, you're still you're still getting light as you're traveling, you know, down the road. So it just seemed like the perfect uh, solution is to get flexible panels. But I wasn't into gluing it on the trailer. Right. Like. I certainly don't think that way now, but I was thinking of resale value of my trailer. I didn't want to do anything perfect. Now it's like, ow, it doesn't matter. <laughs> At this point in time, rip it apart, whatever you want. Nobody's ever going to want that trailer anymore. 
But at the time, I wanted to keep it simple and, and not do too many alterations that I couldn't redo. Really and so I made the aluminum frame, and just on the edges is where it attaches. And it pivots one way or it pivots the other, or I can take the whole thing off. That part has worked well. But once I passed Texas, you know, because I've been mostly in the West, the weather kind of changed. A lot of clouds, and uh, it wasn't keeping up. And, uh, you know, and a lot of people love getting lithium and all that, and, and lithium is a great idea. The, the, the issue was not just storage, though. Like, a dead lithium battery is still no good to you if you haven't got anything to charge it up with. Exactly. So, that's why more panels was, you know, the last thing I did with it. But I do want to totally rearrange, rearrange it. You know, when I finish this trip, I'm probably, you know, going to get up the hacksaw and the, the nibbler again and, and try some new ideas. Can you consider uh, a, a battery isolator running off your running off your alternator and turning while you're driving? Well, the, o the only thing is, like, yes, and I'm probably going to charge, like, I'm not directed, I'm not charging off my Jeep as I drive. I could, and I probably will. That's one thing I'm going to do. Um, but when I typically camp, I get into a spot, I unhook my Jeep, because that's now what I travel with. This, the home stays in the campsite, and the Jeep goes around. And so, um, whatever power I've got now is what I've got. And if I need to generate more, because I, I don't use an awful lot, but still, it adds up. Uh, I'm usually good for two or three days with very little solar. But I was kind of like six weeks with, I, don't, I think I had about six weeks that I didn't even have one full day of sunlight. And so that's when, yeah, that's when I had to plug in. <laughs> and, but I went, I went about a year and a half never having to use a plug in at all. And I was kind of proud of that. But that doesn't make or break. Like if, if, you, if, if your only goal is to be off the grid, well, then you're going to miss out on other things. So, it's nice to be able to be off the grid, but I'm, you know, if I need the power or if it's crappy or something like that, then, then why not? Enjoy your camp out is, sure. is really what it's about. So it, it pays to be versatile. It pays to have plan B both for energy and for camping and everything like that because you don't know what you're faced with when you're traveling on the road. And I, I never know where I'm going. I, I really don't. I, I go out on a whim, or if I see something sounds interesting, then uh, I'll check it out. Sometimes it pans out, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, I get a lot of tips from the people I meet. So, you know, anytime I'm in a local area, I always ask, if, you know, is there a good place around here to camp and get some recommendations? I'm not gonna hit the what what happened in stores. Montana as you were going back up? And Snow yeah. storm that you experienced. <laughs> yeah, that that one, you know, and that and that that was kind of a strange thing. I was actually doing, I was finishing up a video on the Missouri River, the Lewis and Clark, and I did it, and it was like Saturday, and I looked through it and I said, this totally sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just the most boring video I've ever done. And so I was like, well, what can I do now? Because like I, you know, I try to keep on a cycle. It's hard, you know, getting videos ready for Monday morning. And it's like Saturday. It's like, well, okay. Last spring, I went through. I was trying to get up to uh, to Alberta, and uh, and the weather kind of got bad. And I had some footage of it. And so I slung it all together. And it's like, okay few hours just kind of makes sense. I threw it out there in November. I figured, you know, November is probably a good time because the, the snowbirds are going to be going down the states and they, they want that, that experience on the road, right? And so I put it out and had a few people look at it, which was pretty good. 
But then all of a sudden, something happened. And I don't know what the formula is, but the damn thing went viral. And I had, I would, I was, I think about. That's your most popular video. That is, yeah, that went insanely popular. Yeah, like I was, I was really happy. I was ecstatic when I had like six, seven thousand people look at a video. But that one's almost one and a half million now. <laughs> but it, I was, you know, little guy putting out these little how to do on uh, camping videos and nature and wildlife. And then all of a sudden I got up one morning and 230,000 per people had looked at it at that one day. And the comments came, came through and the emails came through. I was like, what in the That wasn't even a good video. Why don't you watch one of the ones I really actually put effort in? But the, the challenge to that one was, and I heard it so many times, that wasn't a snowstorm. You want to see a snowstorm, you go to Chicago, or whatever. It's like over and over and over. It's like, no, that wasn't the point. I didn't say the world's greatest, stranded in the world's greatest snowstorm. I just said I was stranded in the snowstorm. And there's a key part of that video, which I'm cursing myself, never happened. But in the 20 minutes before I decided I couldn't go any further, I had a dash cam on, I pressed it, the roads were completely covered, I got behind a snow plow and the snow was going crazy, zero villa vis visibility, and I finally got into Shelby and got everything into the trailer, I checked the dash cam, and the battery died. Um, and that was, that was like, that was why I wasn't even going to release it in the first place. It, I just needed that extra 20 seconds. Yeah. But it's not there. So people don't understand. There was snow, there was ice, and I couldn't go any further. And so, yeah, I got a lot of feedback on that. I still do. But I, I think it did at least open it up to other viewers who wouldn't have seen my videos. Hello. Hi there. Come join the party. Oh, sorry I'm late. Oh, hey, okay, we've late. been waiting. I'm late for a person. <laughs> I, I like it because here you are helping a tractor trailer get unstuck. I thought that was pretty Well, cool. yeah, yeah, and the funny that thing is, cool. like if you look in the video, I'm talking to the camera, and I had no idea what was happening out behind me. Mm -hmm. He's spinning around in the back. It was like perfect. Yeah. And so after I did my little blurb, I went out and it's like, well, What's going on there? And so uh, I had these things that I kept telling people, oh, you get these traction aids and they work really good. But I actually never used the things, right? <laughs> and I just, okay, an emergency, I just stuck them in the back of the Jeep. And so, yeah, tried them all, tried them work. The guy told me, and everybody says, well, this is Swift. I don't know anything about drivers. He told me to put them in the front. And so I did. Well, it was the wheels in the back that were spinning. It's like, well, why did you have me put them in the front? So, so I put them in the back, and uh, and and they worked fine. And off he went. He said he'd buy me a beer, but he never did. He never <laughs> well, even though the trucker didn't come through with a beer, one of the people that went to my event did. Thank you for the two brothers' love of hops beer. I'm going to enjoy that. And sorry, I can't remember your name. I met so many people. And I just don't remember their names, but just thank you for everybody that came out. I, I'm just so happy. I'm, I'm revitalized. I'm inspired. Um, I just have some of the greatest viewers of all of YouTube, and thank you for that. And a few people went a little bit overboard. They shouldn't have, but people like uh, Marty gave me a Walmart gift card, which is going to be handy because I, I almost live by Walmarts and gas stations these days. Uh, I got this cool hat, Route 66. I've got a vinyl sticker to replace the one that's peeling from Vintage Vinyl in St. Louis. Uh, Lauren sent me his CD of blues music, which he actually said I can use in one of my videos, so I'm really going to enjoy that. Uh, thanks to Al for showing me his um, 
Flagstaff trailer and how he fixed it up. I'll put a link to, to his video. And Dwight, you kind of went overboard, but he got me this little sound recorder, which I'm using what now. I hope it improves uh, my videos. Thank you, Dwight. Thank you for all for attending. Thank you all who watch my videos. Hopefully I'm going to get to meet you someday. Do you hear that? That's the Judy, Judy, Judy bird. Must be a Cary Grant fan. <laughs>